Good morning, everybody. Good morning. What a great greeting on a Monday morning. I'm Jason Perkins Cohen. I'm the Director of Employment uh, for the City of Baltimore. Uh, it is a beautiful Monday morning. Uh, the weather, it's sunny outside, it's mild, and we're here talking about thousands of jobs for Baltimore City residents. So that's my kind of Monday. It's like Christmas Day. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, several elected officials in the room. Uh, Comptroller uh, Pratt, thank you for being here. Uh, Councilman Stokes and Councilman Schleifer, thank you guys uh, so much for, your, for being here and for your support. Uh, Youth Works is Baltimore City's summer jobs program. It's for young people ages 14 to 21. And you've heard us talking about it for, for a long time now. It's one of the nation's largest summer jobs programs and it's so successful because of days like today, because of the public-private partnerships that we have. The fact that we can do this in Baltimore like this and have this kind of audience uh, is what sets Baltimore apart. Uh, it's important to have a little bit of historical context for this. Uh, the federal government used to support summer jobs, but unfortunately they cut funding many, many years ago. And many cities aren't as lucky as Baltimore to have a strong business community and philanthropic community to step up and support. Uh, but we are fortunate to do that, and that's why uh, it is very real. The business community understands uh, the, nest, the need to build their future workforce and to provide jobs, and the public sector and the nonprofit sector understands that it's a way to give back to the community and offer young people this opportunity. So uh, I'm going to start this off by introducing the mayor. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit off script. Uh, and rather than give you the sort of traditional, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that's all right. Uh, the traditional bio, you guys know it's our mayor, but I wanted to first uh, publicly and sincerely thank you uh, for being such a strong supporter of youth employment uh, by talking about it significantly in your state of the city address just a few days ago. But I also want to make sure that you all know that this is not something that the mayor came to in the last 100 days. Uh, and I know that personally because Several years ago, in my first 100 days, more like my first 30 days, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure you remember this, yeah. uh, then Senator Pugh called me directly on my cell phone. I don't know how she got my cell phone. <laughs> Mayor works in mysterious ways. Uh, and she said, I want to talk to you about employment. And I, and I was ready to talk right there on the phone. She says, no, no, no. I want to come down to your office and talk to you about employment. Now, I just have to say that um, I can I'm raising the number of fingers in my hands the number of times that elected officials have come to talk to my office or typical agency heads to talk about these kinds of things. But that's not, that's the way the, the then senator, now mayor works. And when we sat down to talk about it, it was the pronoun we. Uh, she wasn't looking for then senator, now mayor, not so interested in briefings uh, and long briefings where we're just giving you information or uh, that's not the way she operates. She wants to get down to business. Uh, she wants to make a plan. She, wants to say, she was saying, this is what I'm going to do. These are the people that I'm going to call. This is what you can do. Um, there were no microphones. There were no cameras. There was no one with a notepad. Uh, and it meant a lot to me that you did that. Uh, and it really speaks to the way she operates. And it's the way we really have to get jobs here. Um, absolutely, uh, the press conferences are necessary to set the vision. But then it's going to get down to the work. And whether we're talking about 100 jobs here or 200 jobs there, and I like using big numbers, or it's onesies and twosies, these are real opportunities for real kids. And the only way to do that is to roll up your sleeves. So I really thank you both for, uh, for doing that several years ago, and again, um, for your current support. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce a longtime advocate for youth employment, Mayor Catherine Pugh. Thank you all for being here. What I said to Jason also was that I needed the faith-based community to chip in. And you know, everybody can advocate, everybody can talk about what they want to do, but it's about the action. And so what I actually set out to do at that time was to go out to the church community and say, look, I need you all to take up collections because you too can be a part of changing uh, the attitudes about young people, you also can help us to employ young people in our city. Everybody knows that for $1,500, you can employ a young person for the summer. We're also looking at how do we create year-round opportunities for young people to work. And I said this in my State of the City address because what 
folks don't understand is that there are young people out there who not only want to work, but need to work. And some of them are supporting families, some of them are supporting drug addicted parents, but at the same time, some are looking for a vision for their future. And if you don't open up your companies and your corporations and your nonprofit organizations to them, they don't get a chance to see their future. And so we're excited about the Youth Works program. This year we have a record number of young people who've applied to work this summer, 12,500. That's just this summer. And as I said in my State of the City address, they all need to work. If we're not hiring our young people, the drug dealer will. And believe it or not, they're recruiting them as early as eight years of age. And so not only do we have to have youth working programs, we've got to have summer programs that keep our young people engaged. And we have those programs, so we want to direct our young people who are not of age to work to those programs. But more importantly, it is the help of the corporate, nonprofit, philanthropic, and the faith-based community that will help us to meet this goal. And so I'm very excited, Jason, about what you've done to lead this. I wanna also acknowledge that Councilwoman Sneed came in the room after the announcement of the other uh, council uh, persons. But I'm really excited about this, you all, because you make the difference in the lives of so many young people. So we've gotta engage them, we've gotta hire them, we've gotta make sure that their experience is meaningful and hopefully you'll bring them back next year and the year after that, and then maybe they become one of your full-time employees, and maybe you'll even consider engaging them year-round. This is so important, and I cannot thank you all enough for supporting it. I am gonna make my own donation to the Youth Works Program this year of $10,000. I challenge every council person and everyone in the city who can to do something. Let's make sure our young people are working. Everybody talks about what the city needs to do. The city, the city has a lot to do, and we're engaged in trying to do as much as we can for as many as we can. But again, thank you for your efforts, and again, we look forward to the continuing support of this community, the corporate, the philanthropic, uh, the nonprofit, as well as the faith base. Thank you again. I get to introduce one of my favorite people, and he is the CEO of the Baltimore Gas and Electric Company, who every time I ask him to step up to the plate, and I know he said, well, I wish he would stop calling me, uh, <laughs> step up to the plate, he always does, Calvin Butler. Madam Mayor, thank you, and good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. Um, on that note, you do call. I do. <laughs> but and, that's I, why, and that's why Sharon loves me. That's so. exactly right. And, and I appreciate it. So, you know, just a little side note. We were, we were talking before we came in here. And she goes, I called you Thursday, Friday. I said, I didn't see that. I said, you know, I answer. And, uh, but I'll work on that. I, my, but I answer because what you guys have just seen this morning is the commitment and the passion to our city. But in this particular instance, our kids our young people. And it's one thing to have a commitment and a passion. It's another thing to say, let's take that and put it into action. And what this morning represents is our mayor's commitment and passion and the member many, uh, members of the city council and administration and, and executive offices, the commitment and the work plan to get things done. I also want to extend a thank you in joining us today. This program, Youth Works, makes an incredible impact on our community. As you know, by providing employment opportunities to thousands of young people throughout the summer months, a time, as the mayor said, when students can and most likely will be distracted. This program is truly special because it demonstrates once again a partnership between all segments of our community. And it amplifies the positive impact we can all make when we collaborate and work together. That's why I'm very proud to be a member of the Mayor's New Youth Works Leadership Circle. Yay. It's one of those calls I have. <laughs> <clears throat> Connecting with our communities and showing young people the career paths possible with companies like BGE and others is something that we take very seriously. 
So seriously, in fact, that we created the Smart Energy Workforce Development Program in 2016. This is our strategic effort to recruit qualified and diverse talent into our entry level positions. The program, and I'd like to share it with you briefly, has two major components. First, we've partnered with local workforce development agencies to help applicants for our field jobs prepare for the Construction and Skilled Trades Test, or the CAS test, an industry requirement. And second, our long-term plan involves developing deep relationships with four vocational Baltimore City High Schools. We work with them to help prepare students in the Construction, Computer Aid Design, or CAD, Automotive and Pre-Engineering trades. From 10th grade onward, these, there are multiple touch points that with BGE so the students understand what they are studying transfers to the real world. We do not believe that all students are going to go to college. We hope if they want to, they're able. But for those who choose not to, we want them to know there are opportunities that exist, that they can have a good living, provide for themselves and their families, and create gener generational wealth at a company like BGE. The program culminates in a highly competitive six-week internship program. At the end of the internship, students take the CAS test. If they pass and successfully graduate, they become eligible for an apprenticeship that can lead to full-time employment with BGE. So you see, by connecting with the youth of this city and connecting seriously, we create a win-win because we want to employ the citizens of our city. We want to represent the communities in which we serve. This will strengthen our communities at a deeper level and give students a real opportunity to get real work experience. But we also benefit because we build that pipeline of qualified and diverse employees. We are so committed to this effort, we are donating funds to provide jobs for 16 students throughout the city. And it's also why this year we're doubling our own financial commitment to the Smart Energy Workforce Development Program, which with interns, another $50,000, which will provide another opportunity for 25 additional students to work side by side with the BGE professionals around the room and prepare themselves for opportunities. This morning was important. We have several of our BGE executive leadership team here today. They're here not only because our mayor's here, <laughs> but they're here because we recognize that the city council, community leaders are here. And we want to let you know that the fact that the mayor chose to do this here today, the fact that the mayor chose to do this here today means a lot to us because it recognizes the commitment that we have in our community. And I want to just publicly thank the BG team for being here, not just because it's your home, but also <laughs> recognizing the importance in which this serves for us. But as you know, we can't do it alone. It takes a collaborative effort. Our hope is that other organizations will join us and other longstanding supporter of YouthWorks to make 2017, 2017, the strongest year yet for the program. I'm sure that the mayor would be quite pleased if we demonstrate to her that this is just the first start on that journey, first step on that journey, and that 2017 will set a new baseline for everything that we do moving forward. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to another member of the mayor's YouthWorks Leadership Circle, Patrick McCarthy, president and CEO of the Annie E. Casey Foundation. I know that Patrick has some special news that he would like to share. Please join me in welcoming Patrick. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I, I am very, very pleased to be here and thrilled to represent the Annie e. Casey Foundation and to join the Youth Leadership Council, frankly, because it's in partnership with our made, main leader in Baltimore, Mayor Catherine Pugh, with her vision, but also because of the kind of commitment that organizations like BGE and visionaries like Calvin Butler 
are showing. It's just going to be an honor for me to serve uh, on, that, uh, on that group. The Casey Foundation believes strongly in the importance and the value and the power of giving young people an opportunity, giving them a path towards success. And a summer job, that first job, is a crucial step toward building an entire career, something many of us know from our own, from our own path. Through this program, through YouthWorks, the city of Baltimore introduces young people to the working world and gives them invaluable opportunities to begin developing skills that will carry them through, through a lifetime. And the business community, again, including partners like BGE, is critical to the success of that program. Last year, thanks to uh, the many folks around the city who answered the call for additional support, uh, the Mayor's Office of Employment Development was able to offer 8,000 jobs to the young people of this city. And we know firsthand from our own experience with young people in Baltimore that they crave these opportunities. They want the chance to work. They want the experience. And for me and for many others of us in this room who got our start in our careers through a summer job, we know they need this opportunity to work. Now, my own first jobs were not quite as glamorous as some of the <laughs> jobs that are being offered through YouthWorks. Uh, my first uh, summer job was picking blueberries, and I learned a lot from that job. I learned to show up on time. I learned to do hard work, and I learned that I didn't want to pick blueberries for this <laughs> job. These kinds of jobs expose us to the realities of the working world. They teach us the joy of a paycheck. They teach us the importance of showing up on time. They help us learn new skills. And they also open the world for who we can be as adults. They give us that first glimpse that I can make it on my own with support, but I can make it if I work hard. The sad fact is too often in our beloved city of Baltimore, not enough young people have this opportunity. Not enough young people have this clear path to the possibilities that they have within themselves. YouthWorks offers that path. So this year, again, the Casey Foundation is very pleased to join uh, the city's drive to, continuing to continue setting thousands of our young people on this path towards success, and also strengthening the future workforce for all of our employers here in Baltimore. So this year, in addition to the $500,000 that we have already committed to the YouthWorks program, we are issuing a $250,000 challenge. We will match dollar for dollar up to $250,000 all other contributions to get to the resources we need to make this happen. We, we certainly hope more businesses and others will consider joining the many public and private partners who have already contributed to the success of YouthWorks, both from the, both from the standpoint of the dollars they invest, but also very importantly in the jobs that they offer. Thank you very much, and I believe I now turn it back over to Jason. Amali. No, incorrect. Um, no, Amali couldn't oh, be. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Patrick. Sorry. Yeah. Patrick, thank you very much. So we've spent a lot of time this morning talking about the impact um, that youth work makes on the community. I think it's always important to hear from a young person who has directly benefited from BGE's Smart Energy Workforce Development Program. And before I introduce her, Patrick talked about the uh, jobs. And I have an opportunity throughout the summer to meet these young people that work at BGE. And I'm often reminded, and I never forget, that I was there. Um, you, know, you know, many of you have heard you know, my story, but that's not important because at the end of the day, someone provided me an opportunity. Someone provided that learning experience. Someone took the time to not just give you a paycheck or let you earn a paycheck, but to mentor and to counsel you along the way. And I would challenge, as, as Taylor comes up, to think about that. As you employ these young people, you spend time with them. You counsel, and not just through the summer, but throughout the year. Because that's where the real learning occurs. 
it's, it's the, the job is the paycheck, right? That's nice. But when you spend time, and I can, oft, I can tell you this, you're as enriched as the, from the experience as they are. So with that, please join me in welcoming Taylor Jones up to the podium. Taylor Jones. I would first like to thank BGE, Youth Works, the Madam of, I'm sorry, Madam Mayor, and the City of Baltimore for presenting me with this opportunity to stand before you today. I am a 17-year-old senior at Bard High School Early College, which is a public high school in partnership with Baltimore City Public Schools. In June, I will receive my high school diploma and my associate's degree in liberal arts. I plan to continue to continue my college endeavors at either Goucher College or Frostburg State University, where I'll study mass communications and eventually I would like to become an anchor for a top news station. When I was asked to speak about my experiences with YouthWorks, I knew this was going to be an easy task. When I was told it would be held here in the bj &E building, where I worked last summer, I knew that some of my jitters would be calmed. It feels familiar to be here. I worked with YouthWorks for the past two summers. My first year was at Martin Luther King Jr elementary school. The job consisted of a group of youth setting up classrooms and participating in job training to prepare us for our careers. We also worked with an employee from Wells Fargo who taught the fundamentals of financial literacy, such as budgeting and setting up a savings account. Those lessons were great, but I didn't get a personal experience until I received my own paycheck and began spending the money. <laughs> <laughs> I found myself many times at the register with the voices of my parents playing in my head saying, money doesn't grow on trees. <laughs> I quickly began to realize the reality of this when I watched my money disappear like magic. <laughs> in 2016, my second year with YouthWorks, I qualified for the Hire One Initiative. I was given a date and a time for my interview and told it would be with bj &E. That sounded like a big deal to me, and I had to prepare for this. The interview went well, and I was told the two other candidates were being considered and that I would hear something back in two days. Sure enough, the call came, and I was told I would be working with bj &E for this summer. I hung up the phone and screamed with excitement. Let me tell you about the amaz amazing time I had working here. Over the course of those seven weeks, I was the human resources intern. I learned to use Microsoft Excel, how to network, and how important it is to be kind. I spent my first few weeks reading resumes and I definitely learned the importance of impressing your employees through your words before they have even met you. <laughs> Working at bj &E at the age of 16 taught me two major lessons. How to effectively communicate with diverse groups of people and how to become comfortable in a social environment. Being social in the workplace is important because you must always be representing and expanding the brand of your company. The diversity aspect was important because I was the youngest person in my department and I had to earn my coworkers respect. Without the help of bj and &E, I'm not sure I would be prepared to walk into a job and be as confident as I am today. If every city employer were to take the initiative to hire at least one young person, we could change the culture and possibly lower the youth unemployment rate. Baltimore City is full of youth who aspire to learn from their experiences as employees and are willing to offer a lot of fresh ideas and possibly help advance the future of these companies. Please support Baltimore's youth by employing them this summer and helping to teach them about the work world the right way. Thank you for your time, and I hope that you all choose to support YouthWorks in whatever way you can. Wow. Who wants to follow that? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> And you know, I have a feeling uh, in a few years when we see Taylor in front of a series of microphones, uh, we will all remember right. that she got her start through YouthWorks and right here today. So you did, oof, did an amazing job. Thank you so much. <laughs> the other part of Taylor's story that I think is really important that, that you highlighted is it's not just about one summer, right? She was able to talk about how this one summer builds on the next summer and you move up the ladder, even if it's different employers, to more and more responsibilities so that you reach your dreams. It's, it's so incredibly important. Uh, the last point I want to make, uh, you know, we've thrown out some numbers today. Uh, 8,000 were offered a job, 12,500 registered. Uh, you know, these are, these are numbers that are sort of hard for us to conceptualize. But what it says to us uh, when young people register in these kinds of numbers, when 1,500 teenagers 
register in January for a job they hope to get in late June is that they want to work, okay? And so as adults, whether you're in the government, whether you're in the private sector, nonprofit, wherever you are, we have a responsibility to honor that commitment. So uh, Calvin, thank you so much for hosting us. Madam Mayor, thank you for being our leader. Thank you all for being here. We'd like to have a photo at the end of the leadership circle. Uh, I, I don't know if I'll be able to get everyone's name, but Janet, uh, Diane Bell McCoy, Tom, please join us for a, a photo. Oh, and Veolia Energy, please join us. Madam Mayor, what's Don. Don Fry, absolutely. I just wanted to acknowledge that since I am the mayor of the city, that I can direct every department head to also hire uh, a youth. And so that's now 240,000 since I've donated 10,000. Uh -huh. And Joan, I know, I, I, so see, I can always count on Joan. <laughs> Let me tell you, because Joan at church is the, I won't even talk about it, but she's, she's such a big fan of young people and probably gives more scholarships than any single individual in this city. So thank you for all of your work. And again, thank you all. We're ready for our photo. <laughs> Big smile, eyes open, big smile, eyes open. Perfect. At me, please, here we go.